Good day Grade 11s. Welcome to this next part of Week 30 where we're going through the control test and we're doing revision. So it says Question 3. In the circuit below, the internal resistance of the 6 volt battery is negligible. Yay! So that means we don't have to worry about internal resistance. Okay, the resistance of the connecting wires is also negligible. It says when switch S is closed, the current in the 6 ohm resistor is 0, 6. So when this is closed, the current in this is 0, 6 amps. Okay. Now it says current pass, they calculate the current pass in the 4 ohm resistor. Okay, so do you agree that I can work out the volts that is going over the 6 ohm resistor? Because we know that V is equal to IR and the volts going across here, we've got the current in 0, 6 and we've got the resistance of 6 ohms. So that's going to be 0, 6 times by 6 and if you pop that in the calculator, you will find that that is 3,6 volts. So this is reading 3,6 volts, but that 3,6 volts is also across the 4 ohm resistor because potential difference of parallel resistors is always the same. So the voltmeter is reading the same. So therefore I can use the same equation but this time I've got the volts and the resistance and I can work out the current that is going through the 4 ohm resistor. So I can go V is equal to IR, the volts is 3,6, the current is what we want and the resistance this time is 4 Therefore, I is going to be 3,6 over 4. So therefore, I is going to be 0, 0,9 amps. So this is 0, 0,9 amps. Okay, not too bad, hey? So we've done that. Now it says the total current in the circuit. Well, that's pretty easy because the total current in the circuit is just the sum of these two currents. Because what happens is the current comes along here, la 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 la, and it comes there and it splits. And some of the current comes up here and some of the current goes up here. And remember that the voltmeter has got such a high resistance that almost no current goes through there. So therefore, this is just going to be 0, 0,9 plus 0, 0,6 which is just 1,5 amperes. So that there is the total current going through the circuit. Now they want the resistance X. They want this dude here. So do you agree that since the current has gone through here and it splits up and gone through here then it gets together here and then it comes along and I know this looks like it's in parallel but remember the voltmeter is got such a resistance, it is in parallel to X, but the voltmeter has got such a high resistance that no, no current goes through here. So this 1.5 is going through here. This is 1,5, right. We also know that the total voltage of the circuit is 6 volts. That means the total amount of energy is such, or potential difference has got, potential energy has got to get around the circuit is 6 volts. Okay, but we've used up 3.6 volts over here, which means we've only got 2,4 volts here. Okay, 6 minus 3.6 is 2.4 volts. And then again, we can use just Ohm's law. We've got V is equal to IR, right? The volts we've got is 2,4 is equal to the current going through there of 1,5 R. Therefore, R is going to be 2,4 over 1,5, which is going to be what? Let's get out our calculator and clear it. So we've got 2,4 divided by 1,5, and that's going to give us 1,6 ohms. So that resistance there is 1,6 ohms. That there is 1,6. Okay, so we've done that. Now it says the 4 ohm resistor gets hotter than the 6 ohm resistor after a while. Explain this. Okay, so think about this. Heat is to do with energy, okay? And it says that the 4 ohm resistor is going to get hotter. But energy, the equation for energy is equal to I squared RT. So now 
we are assuming that the time that the energy resist the form resistor is getting hot is the same as the six ohm resistor so that's the same okay so we can ignore this we can ignore it the resistance of the form resistor is obviously smaller than the six ohm resistor so that doesn't play a part but I squared is a huge it's a huge because of that and therefore the for the same time interval I squared is going to be way bigger through the 4 ohm resistor than the, the I squared through the 6 ohm resistor and therefore this is going to get much hotter. Okay, so that's question 3.4. Let's move on. Now it says, question 3.5, the two graphs below represent the relationship between potential difference and current. So we're looking at V and I basically, okay? But this potential difference is in volts and the current is in milliamps, okay? And it says in a metal wire at two different constant temperatures, T1 and T2. It says state Ohm's law. Okay, now the reason, think again about this. This is the graph of potential difference versus current. So when they ask you to state Ohm's law, they really are saying to you, look, we're using Ohm's law in this question. And Ohm's law just states that the potential difference across a conductor is directly proportional to the current in the conductor at a constant temperature. And we can actually see that by the fact that this is a nice straight line and this is a nice straight line which means that the gradients are the same so what did we say again the potential difference across the conductor is directly proportional to the current in the conductor provided the temperature remains constant now it says calculate the resistance of the metal wire at temperature t1 well that's based on ohm's law which says v is equal to i r okay so we're looking at so therefore V divided by I is equal to R or delta V over delta I. So we're really looking at the gradient or slope of this equa of this graph. So we're looking at this here and we can really just use two easy points. So I'm going to use those two. So the change in Y is going to be 4 minus 0 over the change in X 25 but note that it's milliamps so it's times by 10 to negative 3 minus 0 and if we pop that in our calculator we got 4 minus 0 is just 4 divided by 25 to the exponent of negative 3 and we get 160 so the resistance of this T1 is 160 ohms okay Let's look at our next question. Now it says, which graph has obtained a higher temperature and give a reason for the answer? Well, we know that the slope is equal to V over I, which equals the resistor. So therefore the guy with the greater gradient or the greater slope is gonna have the greater resistance and the greater the resistance it represents the higher the temperature. So therefore T1, is the dude that's going to have the higher temperature because it's got a greater resistance. Let's look at a final question. It says the metal wire is an ohmic conductor. Justify the statement by referring to the graph. So we've actually mentioned it already. We have said that Ohm's law is that V over I equals R and you can see that it's a beautiful straight line graph which means we're going to have the same resistance no matter what and if that's the case it means that this is an ohmic conductor because it obeys Ohm's law. Okay, let's look at question 3.6. It says a washing machine is labeled 220 volts and 3200 watts. Okay, it says calculate the resistance of the washing machine's resistor. So if you look on the formula sheet, you can see P is equal to V squared over R, where P is your power measured in watts, 
V is your volts or your potential difference measured in volts and R is your resistance and we want the resistance. So do you agree therefore that R is equal to V squared over P? We're just rearranging, we're taking that up there and that one there. Therefore R is equal to V which is your volts which is 220 all squared divided by 3200 and now we get out our calculator again. So we say it is 220 squared divided by 3200 and that becomes 15 comma 125 but remember you always round up to two decimal places so it's 15 comma 13 ohms. So this is 15 comma 13 ohms therefore this is 15 comma 13 ohms. Finally, question 3.6.2, it says calculate the cost of using the washing machine for 1.5 hours if electricity costs 1, 1, 1.24 per kilowatt hour. Okay, so we know that the cost is 1.2 rand, 1.24 per kilowatt hour okay and this is running for 1.4 hours so and we want to know what the watts are note we know that the kilowatts is what it's 3200 watts which is 3,2 kilowatts okay and that's per hour so we're going to multiply that by 1,5 hours and that is going to give us the amount of electricity but then we have to times it by the 1 rand 24 per kilowatt hour so we've got 3 comma 2 times 1 comma 5 times 1 comma 2 4 which equals 5 rand 95 so it costs us six rand basically, five rand ninety-five to run the washing machine for one for one and a half hours. Okay. And that grade elevens is question three of the long questions. We will carry on with question four in the next lesson. Have a great day.